You're clinging on. We're clinging on to rubbish. We're clinging on to that which will be left. We're hanging on to that which will go nowhere. And it's killing every single one of us. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيَّةَ ثَلَاثَةً He says, three things will follow you to the grave. He says, أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعْمَلُهُ He says, three things will follow you, my brother, to the grave. He says, your family, your wealth, and your a'mal. He says, two things will come back and only one thing will remain with you there. Brother, paint that how you want. This is the reality because Rasulullah He doesn't speak from his own vain desires. Rather, what he speaks is revelation from Allah. And you try this. I've tried it many times when you go to the funeral. And I remember asking myself, how does your wealth follow you to the grave? So I remember one time someone in the area, no need to mention names, some big timer was shot. And naturally, yani at the mosque, all the boys, all the tats, all the big gold chains, the Gucci hats, eh? the Lamborghini Gallardo parked outside. And this all followed him to the grave. The money went. The Louis Vuitton shoes and the, and the, and the, and the, you know, and the brightling watches with the diamond bezels. And so all of this followed the man to the grave. They buried the man. 20 minutes later, everyone's walking away. And sure, where are we going to go eat? What are we going to do? What, what? The family sat there, made dua, a couple of tears, walked back. And what was he left with, my brother? Nothing. He was left with nothing. He was left with his amal. If he did good, he will verily see. And if he did bad, he will surely see. My brothers, the love of this world, Wallah al Azim, it's crippling us. This heart, you know, Wallahi, I went to Hajj this year, and Alhamdulillah, I've been on Deen for I don't know how long, and you know, in and out, and lessons, and sitting with my Shaykh, and whatever have you. But even on the day of Arafat, I struggled. I absolutely struggled to get a tea. Just one tea. I want something to fall. Nothing. Because this heart can only take so much. And this heart, instead of filling it up with the love of Allah, I filled it up with the love of this dunya. So I'll give you an example. I want you to imagine now one of the brothers bought a Mercedes Benz, bought a brand new car, whatever it is, bought a brand new car, parked it in the driveway, and the next morning, car's gone. So automatically we're going to ask, brother, you insured? And we're holding on to the reply. If he says yes, alhamdulillah. If he says no, yeah, but yeah, your heart is going to burn. So when the brother says, you know, brother, the Mercedes Benz wasn't insured. Oh, my heart. Oh, you could just cry. But the brother's been missing Fajr for 10 years. And you haven't moved an inch because of it. Rasulullah he says, not Fajr, forget Fajr. He says, the Sunnah of Fajr, the Sunnah, those two ruka, is worth more than the world and what it contains. And the Ummah is missing it day after day, day after day. No problems. It's only Sunnah. But if a piece of metal wrapped around some fancy leather, if that was to be taken away from the man, <laughs> that hurts. Why? Because this heart, my brother, has been filled with the love of this world. And it hasn't been filled with the love of Allah. We understand the value of the Mercedes Benz. We understand the value of a brightly watch. I understand the value of a Gucci hat. But I have nothing, absolutely nothing, no understanding, no comprehension whatsoever for the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. اعلموا انما الحياه الدنيا لعب وله وزينه وتفاخر بينكم 
وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الاموال والاولاد كمثل غيت اعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور